good evening everyone welcome to the week 37 of our basic course in vedic astrology by shiva sarvamangala institute of vedic astrology and we are in the second part of jupiter in various bhavas along with the other activities that we do usually uh, i'll take you through the agenda so the last week we have a short recap and this time the secret seven is seven gokulashtami savaries and i have already shared the list to you and we'll have a discussion on that then karma theory i am just going little bit rewinding and uh, beginning with a discussion on action and result a general discussion then the audio check and then we are going to do set 12 as the fundamental question <clears throat> then we are going to see something very interesting what mercury sometimes uh, <coughs> there is no sunrise or there is no sunrise even after one in mercury and there are some positions in mercury's uh, orbit where you find the sun is uh, very strange in its movements we'll see that as well and then we get into the shiva content for jupiter in various bhavas followed by the meeting feedback and then <clears throat> lessons learned and q and a so the virtual background you see as i chat is is the mercury surface these are the resources this is shiva's mission and vision so what we learned last class we had the seven geometric tools map to astrology then we had the set 11 of fundamental questions and we saw some unique features in venus and we had the jupiter in various bhavas and also that karma theory was introduced okay i next time i'll try to include the fifth one here the links down at the right are the content and the recording link okay now to our secret seven and i believe people at least most of you or some of you would have attempted um the exercise i gave so i would like people to uh guess the item what would this be sweet cheating also got well cheating this one is muruku kai muruku kai muruku kai muruku this is Tengur. Tengur. Tengur al Muruk. This one is. Butter. Yes. Butter. Butter. This one. Egg. Upu chida. Upu chida. Upu chida. Upu chida. That's correct. Then this one. <coughs> Apam. Apam. Sweet one. Bella Apam. Seventh one. Put owl, owl, owl put. Oh ha, oh ha, made another sweet one. Okay, now I am going to show what I believe uh, the qualities of these are, and then get into the mapping to uh, in terms of astrology. So this is mapping to planets. Now I would like to hear for those who have tried. in what way they mapped or what they thought about each item so let's come to the first one 
let's share let me share some inputs mercury hmm? mercury yeah based on what along with the reason because it has got a lot of craters on the top <laughs> <laughs> okay any other yeah there could be multiple ways of looking at the same thing so i just what i am going to show is just one way of looking at it so i was interested also to get other inputs any other ideas anyone had okay so my idea here was strong and energetic of all strong in the sense it's harder than the others and at the same time it is sweet so more energy more calories okay now let's move to the second kai murku inputs please difficult to make difficult all to prepare all cannot uh, do it yeah that's true but what about uh, its qualities and some mapping to astrology saturn saturn why because it has rings it yeah. needs it needs okay and also it's difficult to make so difficulty it's giving isn't it? okay any other ideas no ideas i am sure many of you are preparing all this okay i'll give the thought i had these look like bangles so it has a beauty to it beauty of the bangle next one any ideas anyone kavita ji you know <laughs> it's very hard hard okay so what can it be mapped to um so what can we make from the shape of this confused it's confused it's so k2 confused yeah chaotic uh, k2 yeah. rahu rahu uh, okay fine so because the way it comes up it's sort of random kind of thing means random in the sense it's unsteady and like kind of um uh, no defined defined route it follow anything any any route kind of thing so unsteady crazy next moon ah oh? oh, sorry <laughs> no no we'll come to that uh, planets a bit later butter what do you think of butter <coughs> very soft smooth soft soft smooth okay anything else this uh, satvik so pious pious okay good one so i had soft hearted kind next one uppu cheedai um small but uh, crunchy and small but crunchy yes i feel mercury you feel It's relating to mercury i think why because it's small um, but it is kind of i feel related to intelligence okay 
Any other ideas? So I have mapped it this way. We can take only little by little, something like an advice. Okay. Then next one. The lapam. Soft, sweet. Soft, sweet, yes. So that would be the primary thing here. Among all, this, this is kind of the sweetest in taste. So sweet in tongue. That means speech. Last one. Any thoughts? Flaky. Make. And please repeat. It's like flakes. Clay. No, flakes. If a lake is flakes. Flakes, yes, flakes. Good. So what can we do make out of from that? If it is flakes. So I've given it like, it doesn't have any definite shape. It is something that we as who eats gives the shape. So it's sort of kind of not having any strong identity of its own. Others shape it. So it's like a worker. Okay. Now I think by this time, you should have guessed which planets each is. First one. Mars. 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 Correct. Mars. Second. Venus. Venus. Yes. Third. Rahu. Rahu. Yes. Rahu. Fourth. Moon. Moon. Moon is correct. Next, advice. Uh, Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter. Jupiter is correct. <coughs> Sweet in speech. That should be. Mercury. 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 Walker. Saturn. Saturn. Perfect. Okay, excellent. So, hope you enjoyed. Let's move to the next section. Karma theory for dummies. This is intro. Now, we go back to sort of discussing on a uh, very fundamental thing like action and result. Okay, now I have some two scenarios and I have some question on that. What can be said about the result in the two cases? Okay. First one is like this. A ball is falling. Okay. Now I have another case. It's a cricket match. 5 for 94, 15 overs, chasing 118. Now I would like to hear inputs. How do you compare or what can you say about the result that would come based on these two actions? One is falling of the ball, the other is the cricket match in progress. The second result can be anything. But the first is like uh, the ball, uh, we know the results like that it is going to fall. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear only this from others as well. Uh, what do you expect about the result from these two? I think for the ball, obviously it is going to fall and the bounce back. That is one. Mm. And from the cricket uh, match score, you know, from the scorecard, we don't know whether we will uh, chase or win or lose. We don't know. We don't know. The result is uncertain. Based on the effort, based on the effort, probably the cricket match can go either way. Okay. That means we cannot say at this point 
what the outcome will be, right? What the result will be. Yes, yes, yeah. We don't know yeah. whether we'll lose or win. Yeah. Okay. That's the correct interpretation. As we all know, that's how it's, it is, cricket match. So that's why I'm asking this why. Now let's uh, discuss a little bit more. Why do you think the cricket match is uncertain to say? What makes it? The... Yeah. It depends on the players. And it also depends on the action yeah, is not completed in the second one. So oh. the, 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 the cricket match is uncertain because every ball outcome is uncertain. So that's why the whole match is uncertain. Every ball, okay. We don't know how the Bella runs. Yes, like, yes. Out. Okay. Why is every ball uncertain? Why, why don't we know about what runs will be scored for each ball? Because every ball is different. Depends on the player. It's unpredictable. It's unpredictable. It depends on the, it how depends the... On the bowler how, and we can't predict that how the bowler is going to uh, ball. So, yeah. it's so not predictable. The bowler, yes. The batsman also. Batsman as well. And then if batsman hits somewhere, then what, does it depend on anything the, else? The fielder also. The fielder. Yes. And then suddenly it becomes cloudy. Then weather. The weather. The umpire. And then uh, the injury, maybe the the, uh, the, the batsman. You know, In between injury. Yeah, yeah. Gets an injury. And if you have the further batting lineup is in inexperienced. Hmm. Or yes. if there is uh, practice was not good the previous day. Yeah, yeah. So there is a miscommunication and misunderstanding between the two batsmen and they get run out. Okay, hmm. good. So that means there are a lot of factors here involved that makes it uncertain. So thank you for your inputs. So that is what uh, uh, all is needed for this slide. And I have some final comments here. So result is uncertain in the case of the match. How could the result be? It could be better than expected or worse, or maybe as expected, right? So we don't know how things will turn out. And the bottom line is <clears throat> there are many unknown factors in a cricket match and same as in life as well. We have too many unknowns. Now, what this means is that there could be cases where result is very clear and there is also cases where result is uncertain. We don't know how the result will be. Now, I just made this chart. Okay, so we have actions that we take, like the example of that simple thing like a ball, throwing of a ball, the result is very clear and that follows the natural physical laws some we, we can feel actually there are many natural laws we cannot feel we cannot feel uh, gravity unless we are falling and then we cannot feel the electromagnetic uh, waves and also radio waves you cannot feel it but it is there and they do impact so non-contact also possible contact possible and in the case of uncertain result there could be two categories okay one is where we can do things we can control but there are things we cannot control. So like uh, the weather, we cannot control it. We can control our practice and all that, but we cannot control the weather. And in case of things we can control, it could be our skill development, the prior education we had. I mean, you just keep the cricket match in the background. Then these are the various things we can have control on okay although we can <clears throat> we can work on our skills and you know we need to ensure that we, our body is fit mind is focused all these are essential for a good outcome of the match and we need to do the right things as well as do the things right we need the right you know uh, choose the right ball but you need to hit the ball in the right way so both are involved and also at that moment like someone said for each ball matters Every ball, you need to give that effort at that point in time. Effort at that point in time, real time. So these are all the various things that 
are possible for us to consciously uh, control to some to a good extent okay and there are things which are beyond our control okay so certain things are like purely chance we can't do much at all uh, but there is another area which is said to be ordained that means it is something that's been <clears throat> that's where the doctrine of karma comes in that based on your past actions there are some results seen or things get aligned uh, or you know uh, sort of favored or disfavored based on these and these have been observed that's the reason it is there and that's where the karma theory is uh, is fitting in and in mahabharata there is a chapter 33 and in that there is a dialogue between uh, yudhishthira and draupadi and that is where it's known that draupadi had knowledge of this doctrine of karma uh, as she learned it from her father while he was learning from another uh, a wise brahman uh, sage so <clears throat> in that dialogue only the draupadi tells about uh, uh, why things are so because yudhishthira's uh, situation was being discussed uh, being so right here you know full dharmic his experience is not so good right so uh, that's where this thing comes up in that dialogue and based on the verses what she, uh, you can make from her verses is that so this can be combined together as effort according to those verses what happens actually is uh, neither completely determined by effort nor completely chance it's not completely random and it's not completely predetermined or completely ordained it is a combination of these effort pure chance and ordainment okay so it's a combination of these three so there is no clear cut kind of answer and uh, where our astrology fits in where the discussion on free will what are the things even within effort we can control what you know things like that we'll try to get in a uh, little more detail from next week okay that's all i want to cover in this week okay and i think we should proceed forward to the audio check i hope those slides provided some insight and good information but that is needed for the further discussions next week onwards now audio so i've launched it excellent very fast 13 out of 13 all have replied audio is very good share results okay so thank you for that now we come to the set 12 fundamental questions um yeah so i have launched it let me read out once so first question is which is a karma house third or sixth second is which is a an artha house 10th or 5th third question which is a dharma house 7th or 9th not sure how many kept familiarity with this one i am not sure at all i have just filled it in random fine yeah but you will be able to understand now once we discuss yeah
I have received nine out of 13 responses. Eleven done, twelve done. Okay, it is still twelve. I land the poll here. Share results, which is a comma house. Uh, eight people say third house, four say it's sixth house, which is an artha house. Eight say tenth house, four say fifth house, which is a dharma house. One say seventh house, eleven say ninth house. Okay, now stop sharing. And we'll see here now. So, comma house, third, sixth. So the answer would be third. Okay. So in the uh, birth chart, it, the first one is always dharma. So it starts with dharma, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. And the same thing goes on in cycle. So dharma, artha, kama, moksha. Again, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. Again, one more time. So if you go by that order, the numbers will follow. 10th and 5th, but this should be easy because 10th is about career. So karma, artha, 10th um, house. And this is also frequently we have discussed 9th is spirituality and all that. So 9th has to do with dharma. Okay. Thank you very much. So let's move to this next one. Mercury. Strange things on Mercury. Oh. First thing is, I want to ask a question. Spin versus orbit. What is the difference? Can someone say? What is spin? What is orbit? Spin is the axis, the movement on the axis, and the orbit is around the sun. Yes, that's correct. And uh, do we know anything about Earth's spin and orbit do you remember the yeah, i think there was a there was one class in which all details were shared i, I don't remember that but yeah, yeah, yeah. okay okay that is my okay that's no problem so i have now something let's watch puja pant she is going to do 105 spins in kathak dance okay after that i have one question okay try try to observe carefully that video There may be a bit of lag, but okay, it doesn't matter. It's only less than two minutes video. Is it visible? Any feedback? Yes, it, it is. It has started showing up. But... Yeah, so I'm playing now. But please.
That was amazing. Okay, now going back to our yeah. Now my question is, how many revolutions did she complete? Three. Is it only three? I think it was more than three. Anyone, anyone observed? I think it was five. Yeah. It was more than three for sure. Yeah. So even what I had observed was five. But do you see 105 spins and five revolutions? So the revolution takes, uh, you know, was much less. Yeah. Spins were much more. That's how usually planets like, I mean, Earth and also will revolve much more times than the total orbital time, right? Now let's go to a related thing for Earth. Okay. This is spin. This is its orbit, orbital motion. Now, can you try to do this calculation? Earth year to Earth day. You can write the Earth year in terms of days. Doesn't need to actually calculation. You can just tell mentally. What would it be? 24 uh, hours to 365 days, is it? So 24 hours is one day. One day, yeah. So 365. So one day to 365. Earth year to Earth day. So it will be 365 by one. So the ratio is 365. Yeah. Right. So 365 times more time it takes compared to one day. Right. Now let's look at something very interesting with respect to Mercury. This time you may have to calculate. This is Mercury spinning. I am giving the days. In terms of Earth days, it takes 59 Earth days. Remember, 59 Earth days just to make one spin. And this is the revolution time. But that is also a similar 88 Earth days only. Now your task is to arrive at the ratio. 88 divided by 59. Yes. Please divide it and tell me. Approximate is fine. One point four nine. Yeah, that's correct. So you can say around one point five. And you can see what is the difference. Now for Earth, it is 365 times. This is just one and a half times. Almost same spin and this is not so much difference. And that leads to many interesting things or even, even strange things you can say with respect to Mercury. Okay, now we'll see those. Now I'm just summarizing it. So this is 365, this is 1.5. Now what happens due to this is... Sorry. Now we find that, so the spin is so slow. Okay, actually it takes, by the same calculation, it takes uh, almost two thirds of the orbit is already done. Okay, by the time it spins one time. But if the sun has to come in the same place where it started from, it will have to rotate even more because it is already shifted in the orbit. 
okay so actually speaking it takes 2 years for the mercury mercury spaces it takes 2 years for the sun to come at the same place that means the sunrise can take more than 1 year on a mercury sky the other part is it is on a very elliptical orbit that means it is not <clears throat> earth is almost similar if the distance from uh, uh, you know on the two ends for earth around the sun not so much difference but here it's a vast difference so on the one side the sun will appear more than 50% bigger than on the other opposite side and the speed because of its very elliptical nature of the orbit the speed will increase a lot when it's near the sun and it becomes slow when it is away from the sun and that's the reason for some very interesting phenomena observed on the mercury sky we'll see that also i'll try to be quick now this is a comparison of the speeds okay that was what we saw was in terms of the time it takes this is the actual speed time i mean the speed in which it does earth spin is actually 1600 km per the way it, it orbits that speed is around 1 lakh more than 1 lakh km per hour and for mercury it's just 11 you can see the difference how slow it is this is much faster orbital speed venus is even more slower 6.5 km this you can actually your walking speed that is how the spin is for venus then this is 126 1000 km per hour and we now will see uh, very very short videos on so the sun may not rise for more than one year is some explanation here happens on mercury you stand in one spot on mercury and pick up a... one second hmm. let's look at what happens on mercury you stand in one spot on mercury and pick a far away star and wait until that star reappears in the same spot that takes 59 earth days that's the length of mercury's sidereal day but after one mercury sidereal day Mercury has moved about two thirds of the way around its orbit. That means it's going to take a lot of extra rotation to get to the point where the sun appears in the same spot in the sky again. Moreover, Mercury rotates very slowly, so it's going to take a long time for this cat rotation to finish. In fact, one solar day on Mercury is two whole Mercury years long. Mercury's solar day lasts 176 Earth days. while mercury's year is half that long 88 earth days that's why the sunrise can be after one year more than one year this is about the sun's strange movement in mercury sky if you were staying on mercury watch the sun it would rise move westward across the horizon but at certain intervals along mercury's orbit it would stop moving reverse direction and move eastward for a while it would then stop and reverse direction again and continue its normal westward motion across the sky why does this happen this is because of how mercury's very elliptical orbit combines with the fact that mercury rotates very slowly planets on elliptical orbits change their orbital speed when they change their distance from the sun when mercury is further from the sun it is moving more slowly in its orbit and when mercury is closer to the sun it is moving faster Moreover, for Mercury, although its rotational speed is usually greater than its orbital speed, as for most planets, it's not always true. Sometimes Mercury is orbiting faster than it's rotating. This change in which type of motion is faster, orbiting or rotating, is what causes the sun to change direction. So that's the reason for sun retracing itself and then moving back. So there is a third one you can if you later you can see on your own okay that i'll skip it for now now we'll move to shivas content on jupiter the remaining six houses so seventh house hmm. someone can please monitor i mean volunteer and read Jupiter in seventh house. The seventh represent the person opposite, not opposing to you. How you interact, how you deal, etc. 
can be your spouse, partner, boss, client, customer, etc. Business mind, good communication ability, become very famous at some point in life, good for government or a political position, good spouse, long lasting marriage, profound success in business. Yep. Anyone has Jupiter? Yeah, I have Jupiter in seventh house. Okay. Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of it matches. Uh, profound uh, success in business. Uh, I don't do any business. Okay. Mm, yes, I have a business mind. Yes. Okay. Mm. Yeah, the rest all is okay, matching. Okay, thank you. Anyone else has? Yeah, anyone else has? Okay. Let's move to Jupiter in eight. Hmm. Someone else can please read. The eighth represents uh, score vitality, transformation, house mysteries, and longe longevity. Makes a person a healer with a very spiritual mind. Gives a long life. Highly determined. Fighting spirit to rise. Health will be an issue. Underweight or overweight? Yes. Eighth, we know, is Dustana house. And... It is also about longevity, mysteries, and Jupiter enhances the life lifespan. Anyone has this? Jupiter in eighth. I have in eighth house. Ishak. Ishak is. Okay. How far does it match? The last two doesn't match. Still did. Um, I don't have any health issues or. I'm okay. not neither under it or over it. That's good. Let's mm. take the thing. Okay. Anyone else? Let's move to Jupiter ninth. Yeah. Maybe Mr. Vishal, you can read this. Yeah, Jupiter in ninth house. The ninth represents the fortune, philosophy, higher education, religion, ethics, culture, traditions, and father. Divine luck from the past, spiritual bend of mind, ethics and high professionalism, wealthy and large family, a good higher education, good health and status in society. Yeah. So it's a very fortunate and favorable house. Does it even have Jupiter in ninth? My grandson has. Okay. Even okay. I have, uh, Venkat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What is your feedback on these points? Uh, quite, quite it's, it matches quite a bit, except for a good higher education. Okay. But uh, uh, I don't have a college degree because I got married at 19, but I've been studying throughout. So, yes, yeah. it matches and, almost. And, and that's actually matching. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, someone else said their uh, grandson has, right? But he's, he's small, sir, but still, he's young only. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then it's okay. Okay, then Jupiter in 10. This is a weak position. Yeah. Someone can read, please. I'll read that. Yes. Well respected and good image in society. Work with full concentration, body, mind and soul. Find it hard in unconventional situations. Job, teacher, professor or counselor. 
Mm. Yeah. So it's a weak in the sense it's relatively weaker than others. So Jupiter, by its nature, is very strong. The one of the reasons could be because Jupiter is more like sadhu type, and it's like asking a sadhu to do business. So it's not going to match with their very nature, right? So that's the reason uh, it is so here, yeah, and they're more more suited for teacher, professor, that kind of. Uh, roles or occupations and less on money minded things so maybe that's also one reason why it's weaker compared to others because there's less of wealth generation in, in this yeah. anyone has Jupiter in 10th Okay, Jupiter in 11th. This will be really good. Yeah, one of the case. I'll read. So, Jupiter in 11th house, Upachaya Sthana, the 11th represents the house of fulfillment of desires, profits, gains, and cash flow. Mm -hmm. Extremely lucky people multiple streams of income, wealth galore, no limits, build their own empire, venture capitalist. Yeah. So we know 11th, <clears throat> 11th is the Lavastana, <clears throat> the, you know, house of fulfillment and the gains. So this is uh, highly beneficial. Also, it's a upachaya, so over a period of time, you reap the benefits. Does anyone have Jupiter in 11th? One well, no, of my friend has Jupiter in 11th. Uh, he's a Taurus Lagna. Okay. Are you able to say about him in this? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Some of them yeah, are matching. Maybe he will, he will get more wealth in future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it is some, uh, generally speaking, above 40, like that, after 40, Upachaya, that's what, if you see the lifespan, yeah. Okay. Now, the Jupiter in last one, the 12th house. I'll read. Yes, please, yeah. Jupiter in 12th house. The 12th represents the house of liberation, detachment, and expenditure. Detached from the worldly luxuries. Spiritually takes over materialism. Money goes out in these forms, gifting, lending, and donating. Philanthropic attitude. Yeah. Are you having Jupiter in 12th? Yeah, I have Jupiter in 12th. Yeah, I, this is Ajay. I also have Jupiter in 12th house and in uh, mean uh, Pisces. Because yeah. Pisces is own Rashi for Jupiter, but the house, I think, is not good for Jupiter. Mm, yeah. Any, what about these other points? I think it 100% matches with me. 100% matching, good. Yes, it matches to me also. Though I'm not very detached from the worldly luxury, but yeah. Okay, good. But certainly this influences much more than any other planet in general. Great. Anyone else has? Okay. So with this Jupiter, uh, I think now next we'll have Saturn. And very soon this thing is going to end. And we'll start with, after that, uh, oh, the power point got closed. One second. And when are we discussing like there are so many planets in one house and then how do we see the effect of two three planets in the same house yeah yeah we'll see before that so next we have saturn then we have rahu ketu three things are there then we'll have a class uh, on all these things like aspects 
uh, and the types of houses and then uh, French shape and then the Mula Trikona and directional strength. So how these things uh, influence the, you know, things. And then we'll start looking, we'll spend some, I think at least two classes I want to do on beginning to look at our own charts. Okay. Then uh, that will become more uh, meaningful discussion where we'll also discuss <clears throat> Uh, about the combination of these planets, okay, uh, to a limited extent, because the actual thing is coming in next year. The combinations is covered in next year, but uh, for us to make some meaning out of uh, the, our charts, at least to some level, we should discuss that. So we'll do that, okay. Uh, so that is the plan. So next will be Saturn, in various houses, then we have Rahu in various houses, then Ketu in various houses. After that, we'll have this. And probably we can um, cover these once uh, in one shot, I mean, in one week itself. I'll try to reduce the time spent on the astronomy part. Um, I think it's possible. So, or we can still keep that astronomy to very short, shorter time, much shorter time and complete 12 houses in one week. I hope it's, if it is okay for everyone. If you feel the information load too much loaded, then we'll do six at a time only. Uh, let me hear your views. Should we do all 12 houses of Saturn next week or only six? We can do all 12 together. All we can do all mine. 12. What about others? Let's, okay, let's see. Who are, 12 together. Jai Shri here. Okay. Whoever is in favor of all 12 to be done uh, in the next class, may please raise their hand in Zoom. I see three, four. Seven already. Okay. Seven so far. Seven out of 12. It is just on the borderline. Benkit, I didn't hear what you had said because somebody I had to go. Somebody called me at there. Okay. No, I was asking uh, instead of six, six houses, can I do 12 houses for the next three weeks? Yeah, if you want to, no problem. Hmm? No problem. I mean, only if majority is okay. So right now we have seven people. Eight. Uh, if you are okay, then it then eight, then it's majority. Yeah. Okay. Then we will do that way. Yeah, because that will quicken our. Uh, yeah. No questions. Yeah. yeah. Quicken in the sense we'll reach sooner to a discussion point uh, on the charts. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Thank you for your feedback. I need to then proceed further in the slide. So we were, we should be meeting feedback. Yes. Okay, I've launched it. Okay, 12 out of 10, 12 done, 100%.
ending the poll, sharing results. Meeting pace is fine, say 100%. I feel I learned something today, 100%. Practical already was engaging, 100%. Topics in general, one says all were hard, four say all easy, seven say partially hard and the rest easy. Audio is very good for everyone. Okay, so thank you for this. Then, any messages, lessons learned? I hope that uh, karma theory thing is, was okay. And that astronomy thing? Yes, it was. You are doing so much effort preparing all this for us. Thank you so much. Very effective, yeah. very well. You're welcome. Yeah, this this helps us to connect much better with the with the, right. the overall scheme of things. This is not Siva content, right? You prepare this all yeah, by yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. To help this this PowerPoint is mine only. Very good. Really, a lot of effort you're putting into this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, any questions we can do now? Any questions on homework or anything else? Question, Venkat. Like, uh, uh, you have made so many PowerPoints for different, different planets, for different, different. But when we start seeing horoscopes or when we start examining, how to, uh, do, do you keep them all open on your laptop? All the different things. How do you, how do you actually toggle between the various uh, PPTs? Um, yeah, one is we should start getting familiar with the things. That's the reason we have the homework and revision at many points in this in the classes also, so that our time reduces referring to many things. That's one thing. So if you have already uh, been practicing so far, to the extent that's given in homework and in the revisions, that will help reduce quite a bit of time referring to many things. The other thing is, um, <clears throat> uh, I can share Excel file, which has a kind of a summary of all of it in you know, all the other slides that is shared. Everything is in Excel form. That will make it easier for you to just filter out and do things. Yeah, because you have to teach us how to do that also, because otherwise there's so many PPTs and you go and open each and every one of them and how to, you know, that uh, itself is uh, how to manage it is that what I'm asking to ask, you know. So please share the, do share the Excel sheet and then teach us how to uh, work, work with it. Yeah, but that will all come after the discussions we do of the birth charts. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No yeah. problem. But this was a question I've been wanting to ask. So that's why. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, that's why the practice is very, very important here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's nearly impossible or it will lose interest if you are trying to keep too many things in the mind or too many things open on the screen and doing here and there. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So practice is an essential part of this learning. And also the reason why the pace is slower and only incrementally information is given. Mm. So that, that, that's the reason it is this way. Mm. Yeah. But yes, to answer your question, there is ways to do more efficiently, which I will share. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Venkat, uh, this is Ajay. Uh, yeah. One question regarding uh, Jupiter in 12th house in uh, yeah. mean, mean Rashi. So mm. it expects the 8th house. Does that mm. mean that uh, the person... Uh, Will get be will be cheated by other people. Is there any such correlation if the, the Jupiter in twelfth house expecting the eighth house in Aries Lagna? Mm, we have not been taught anything like that. Think about cheating. No, cheating means like dhoka. Yeah. Like they will they will uh, you know if they will lend some money to somebody they will never get the money back or something like that. Mm, yeah, because in this we saw. Uh, Eight was weak, right? So that same effect you can see. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 
good are you having that you had read? yeah i have uh, yes that's right so i have 12 uh, jupiter in 12th house uh, and that is expecting eight that means eight scorpio yeah yes scorpio hmm. yeah scorpio is have about the hidden things so yeah maybe possible yes So Jupiter, uh, you know, Venkat, you know, is, uh, the size of the planet is big and it is, it, mm. you know, kind of represents so many things, prosperity, happiness, family and all those things. Yeah. So if uh, the contribution towards the wellness and happiness in the life, if we have uh, not Jupiter well placed, but it can be compensated by the good placement of other planets too, right in the chart. Yes, correct. <clears throat> That's true. Sometimes Jupiter, Venus are together. So they, sometimes, yeah, we have such incompatible things also. So it's possible. Yes. Okay. Mm. Correct. Okay. So, so Jupiter, uh, sorry, sorry, when did last question? Yes. So in, in, if we see the Jupiter in 12th house and if the Rashi is Pisces mean, uh, mm. which is uh, in, in this Rashi, Jupiter is exalted. But the house is not good for Jupiter. In this case, how does it give an overall result? So one is a positive aspect that it is in its own uh, zodiac in which it is exalted, that is Pisces, and but the house is not uh, right. So it will give some mixed results, some positive results of being in the Pisces, also because it in the 12th house is not the right house for the Jupiter. Which will supersede. Exalted is not exalted is in this one, right? Uh, cancer. So, uh, is different. It is directional strength is in first house. Exalted cancer. Debilitated this one. <clears throat> Capricorn. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. It is his own Rashi. I, I read it in some. It's own. Yeah. It's own <laughs> among the two. Sagittarius is better for is better more preferred for it than Pisces. Okay. Yeah. That is that is called Mola Trikona, like having its own favorite house among the two. So it is I will cover that also in that um, after we are done with these planets and houses. Yeah. I have yes. Jupiter, I have I have Jupiter in the uh, eighth house, but it, it is also in the uh, Sagittarius. It is H days for me. Okay. Yeah. And then Jupiter is there. Yeah, yeah. So correct. There could be uh, multiple things we have to see. And yeah, that will we'll discuss those things when we are discussing the birth charts. Okay. And how we are weighing, even if we among these like directional strength uh, aspect of being it's in its own house. Okay, or being in exalted house, these are. I mean, you will find uh, documentations like the way they are graded among these. But Doctor Baller generally doesn't like us to do any grading or scoring at all. It's, you should just look at it qualitatively. That's what his emphasis is usually on. But we can uh, go by the qualitative scale of gradation, and uh, we'll discuss that. Yes, yeah. Hmm. Okay, any other <clears throat> questions? Thank you, Venkat. Okay, then. So, thank you for joining today. Thank we'll you, sir. Next week. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Venkat, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you.